In the center of Europe, there is a small town, let's call it Solar Town. 2,000 people are living there and they invested into a solar park. So when the sun is shining, the solar park generates even more electricity than the people living in this town can consume. And now imagine that this town also has a public swimming pool, which has some energy storage potential. And the people living there, they are also willing to provide demand response. So it's obvious that in such a setting, the distribution system operator cannot continue the business as usual way of operating grids anymore. My name is Sophia Rüster and I am a research fellow at the Florence School of Regulation at the European University Institute in Florence. I'm here today to talk about the regulation of electricity distribution system operators or DSOs because we are in a period where we move from passive distribution grids to smart distribution systems. What did change? Well, the traditional power system could be described as a kind of top-down system, which had been designed to distribute electricity coming from the generators connected to the transmission level to the end consumers. And the distribution system then had been designed accordingly so that there were basically no bottlenecks or congestion. But what we observe today is that the whole situation is changing. The distribution system architecture is becoming much more complex with new features. So we have distributed generation, we have local energy storage, we have electric vehicles and also active consumers. And all these new features together we could call a kind of distributed or local energy resources. So why and where do we have to rethink the regulation of electricity distribution system operators? Let me start with the why. This increasing penetration of these local energy resources leads to an increased volatility of net demand because a part of the demand will be satisfied by local generation, which in turn depends on quite variable and very difficult to predict weather conditions. And this leads to a lot of uncertainty regarding the flows in the local grids, but also at the transmission interface and even to reverse flows in case the local generation exceeds local demand. But all these new technologies uh, do not only pose challenges on DSOs and system operation. With the right regulation and market design, they actually also can offer plenty of new opportunities for new business models related to the aggregation and marketing of these local resources. So imagine, for instance, an aggregator who combines the solar power park together with the demand response potential of the thousand households living there and a fleet of, let's say, 50 electric vehicles. And using these aggregated resources, he offers balancing services to the grid operator. To enable all that, we need substantial investments in order to properly connect all these new resources to the grid and to enable the system to deal with this increased volatility of demand and also to set up ICT infrastructures for grid automation and grid monitoring. And we also need a level playing field because these local energy resources have to be able to compete with the resources that are connected to the transmission grid. And this leads directly also to the question about where we have to rethink the regulation related to electricity DSOs. On the one hand, the DSO is a regulated entity because the grid is a natural monopoly and the allowed remuneration will be collected via distribution of grid tariffs and the structure and format of these tariffs will have an important impact on the grid user's behavior. But on the other hand, the DSO is also a key player along the supply chain. And there are a number of areas in this newly emerging market environment where there is no consensus about whether these tasks should be under the responsibility of the DSO or not. So to conclude, the existing regulation of electricity DSOs has to be reviewed in its full spectrum. We have to consider here the DSO as a network operator, being a regulated entity, but also as a market facilitator along the supply chain. And we have to look at the boundary of the DSO vis-a-vis -vis the TSO and vis-a-vis -vis the energy and power markets.